Hi, my name is Alex. I've argued enough for a lifetime. Sit back, relax and listen. Most of all, share your thoughts too. And of course, subscribe and hit the bell so I can continue making content like this. On to... Well, you'll see. <laughs> I will start with a full disclaimer. I have no idea how NASA is organized internally and who writes what or in what shape strategies for the digital presence of NASA exist. I just happened to notice something over the course of years of following their endeavors online. They have several layers of trustworthiness in their science news articles. 1. There is a published, peer-reviewed, that is, double-checked article underlying the science news. 2. They write about something they plan to publish. The code words for this are submitted for publication in a journal. 3. The Science News article itself is a haven of prose, where scientists' quotes are baked into at times flamboyant but always somewhat imprecise language. 4. The ingress, if it is there, follows suit with the article. 5. The headline is, well, is a variation of this. NASA's new star captures possible screams from zombie stars. Check out the link in the description and revel in the wonders of what lies beyond. It's an article from a few years back, to be clear, but I just love everything about it. There are bustling stars, as if we were talking ants or bees here. There are culprits, while we peer into the heart of our galaxy. There are also things like this little nugget, and I quote, According to one theory, a type of stellar zombie called a pulsar could be at work. End quote. Honestly, they should know the difference between a theory and a hypothesis at NASA. And you know what? They do. It's rather easy to get slightly miffed at these kind of indifferent inaccuracies. It really is, but for all that, another sentence in that article is simply true. Quote, the galactic center is a bizarre place, end quote, as is much of the universe. So, the rest of the scientific community tends to forgive astronomers their way of describing things to the layman, whoever that is, by the way. They forgive the Big Bang, the black hole, the dark matter and dark energy, all the different kinds of dwarfs and giants and whatever else is out there. Whether you like the article or not, it's about getting the message out there, and NASA has chosen to do it this way. In addition, it's not difficult to judge the trustworthiness of things like this, mainly because science writers, like everybody else on the job, never have any time to do things the way they want to. One. Is the original scientific article linked to? If no, that's not good. If yes, is it submitted or accepted for publication? The former means nobody has really checked anything about what is claimed in the news, the latter that other scientists have checked. It is only the rare case in which we get the reference to a peer-reviewed published paper. 2. If we do get a link to some scientific writing, does the information we get about the paper mesh with what the science news article says? This can be checked very easily by skimming the abstract of the scientific publication. These two things don't take much time to assess, and they will give as much of an inkling as we can get as to whether you can trust the news or not. The zombie article doesn't really score well on these points, so let us be cautious and note it down as who knows what importance belies this discovery. Not positive, but also not negative. NASA does, after all, not want to lie or anything. They just have a communication strategy in place to deal with science for the layman. NASA is not alone in this approach either. In fact, most of the stuff you can read online or in popular science books as well as see on TV is like this. I don't necessarily agree with it. Science is hard and complex. What is wrong with saying that? Certain aspects of plumbing are too. In Norway, you are not even allowed to do your own plumbing. It's that difficult if you don't have the proper education or are supervised by somebody who has. Let that last sentence sink in. When is the last time a scientist had the guts to say that you need proper education to do science? And don't tell me there would be something wrong with that either. Unless you are prepared to call out that plumber who lazily and condescendingly explains to you how the sewer system in that skyscraper came together for his academic arrogance. 
Scientists should not finally explain stuff in simple terms, is what I'm saying. Science is hard, so what? The flip side is that you too, in fact, can get that education you need to do science. It doesn't matter who you are. I said science is hard, not science is too hard. Besides, the point of this whole channel is connected to this. You'll have to have studied for a while and gotten experience to be good at science. But you'll also be able to grasp enough of it to make basic decisions like I trust this expert or this guy isn't the expert he claims to be. You manage that for the plumber you call to your house. You'll manage that too for the doctor on TV talking about the science scare du jour. I promise. Just subscribe and hit the notification bell to never miss a new piece. If you've gotten this far into the video, there's a good chance you'll like the rest too. Sorry for that shameless plug, but it is the whole of what I put out on this channel that'll lead you to be able to do this. And in my own experience of teaching and doing science outreach, there is a simple truth. People tend to grasp the concept quite easily when you tell them straight up. The concept of science, that is. Some of the people I meet even feel empowered by the conversation and take the time to learn more on their own. I have come to the conclusion that people may be more or less curious about one thing or another, but they are not laymen. And I see no reason why NASA and all the others should treat them as such. In fact, should treat you as such. Thank you.